one second, everybody. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of the Modcast. I'm Jeff Ketchum, joined by Alex, Jason, Anwar. We're all here a little bit late. Got to admit, got suckered into, uh, sucked into Champions League uh, mm-hmm. football. And I think Anwar did as well. Nevertheless, he may have been on time. I was not. Glad to be with you, though. A lot of stuff to get into today. Thanks to everybody jumping into the Specs chat. Thank you for that. Uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, smash that bad boy, uh, get the notifications, subscribe to the channel, all those things. We do appreciate it. Uh, guys, a lot of stuff to get into today. I thought Steve Sarkeesian's press conference following today's practice was interesting. Let's lead off, though, with the thing that we put on the thumbnail, the title of the video. It's almost transfer portal season again. We're almost there. And the name that pops up today at a position of need for the Longhorns, Bear Alexander, the USC defensive tackle, formerly of Georgia, lives in a penthouse in L.A. Looks like he may. I haven't seen like a truly reputable media outlet or reporter say definitively that he's entering the portal. But it's a hell of an interesting topic to lead off with, guys, because we know that the Longhorns, are looking at the defensive tackle position. Bear Alexander has a curious reputation. I've been told in each of the last two off seasons that he's basically untouchable, that the Longhorns got enough of Bear Alexander early on and like it just wouldn't ever be anything that would happen. And yet, Jason, (laughs) we got people messaging us in our DMs and the rumors are out there and I've reached out to my guys. I know you've reached out as well. Is there, you feel like there's any smoke on this at all? There's enough smoke. Certainly that, that, uh, I think I, or we are paying attention. I mean, I've, there's enough smoke that, uh, I fired off a few text messages today. (laughs) (laughs) Haven't heard back. Um, I I don't mind admitting it. I texted bear directly, you know, I mean, uh, I haven't talked to him in a few years, but I covered him when he was at one of his four high school stops or whatever. I lost count at some point how many high schools. Five he high schools. Five on where? Oh my God. He finished five high, high schools. Dude, I had to look. He finished at IMG Academy. I was like, I don't even remember that, right? So uh, five high schools, three colleges now it looks like, three and counting, I should say. Um, you know, I hit up Bear and I hit up – people close to bear and uh it's been radio silence on my end we know it looks like he is going to enter the portal catch i get it texas hasn't had an interest really kind of marginally played footsie in when he was in high school as a high school recruits but not really um but hey man when you got a need at a position and a, and a former five-star player hits the portal or when he hits the portal that can change a lot of opinions pretty quickly I don't know how I feel about him, man. I mean, he hasn't exactly been a plus college player through two years, including for a bad USC defense. Could he come in and help Texas? Absolutely. Does he have a high ceiling? Absolutely. Is he a no-brainer take that's immediately going to walk in and make that defensive line better or much better? I don't know if that's the case. So, um, you know, that's for the coaches to decide. But to answer your question, yeah, there's enough smoke that we're paying attention. We you know, it makes sense that he wants to come back home after playing at Georgia, after playing at USC. Uh, is Texas that home school? You know, I don't know. We're still kicking the tires on that. By okay. the way, okay. I do see that Hayes Fawcett um, reported 21 minutes ago that Alexander does plan to enter the portal. All right. I'll, and Hayes Alexander has used qualifies as well. He's used you know, Bear. He I'll buy it. He's used Bear. Uh, excuse me. Bear has used Hayes. If oh, I'm yeah. not mistaken, for his commitment edits repeatedly and transfer edits. So I'm assuming that probably came from Bear. Yeah. No, I don't think Hayes Fawcett uh, reports that, um, you know, without any, without having the good. So, yeah, Bear Alexander looks like he's entering the portal. Onward, Longhorn. Pe- the people that I talk to on the NIL front, on just around the program, don't ha- see me. That in the past, they've not had the most glowing views of, I think they feel like Bear's a little bit of a, you know, <laughs> they think he's in it for the money, that he's paid, you know, that, that some, some guys are just more than that 
than others. You hear Sark talk so much about the brotherhood and the chemistry and, 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 and that being so important in the program. Bear's going to be in there. Is the need at D-Tackle such that, hey, you know what? He's only going to be on campus five months. He'll go off to the NFL, but maybe we should kick the tires? It was interesting you say that because Sark was talking about this whole brotherhood uh, thing today and um, talking about the need to have that. And that's kind of the thing that they worked on. And he basically talked about they've had that continuity for, you know, the last few years. Um, and But now he said, like, they've, they've worked on basically acquiring so much talent that they have to kind of re- hit the restart button on making sure they have that togetherness in that locker room. And that's what they're working on now. Um, is trying to get that. And so if you throw in someone like him, I mean, you just know that it, it's it's possible. Like, I mean, dude, come on. Five high, five high schools, and one of them is academically ineligible, but five high schools, three colleges. I mean, you know what you're signing up for. Like, this guy's about self. This guy ain't trying to, you know, hang around for nothing tough. You know, he's just about getting what he can from where he can, and he's going to keep it moving. So, if you feel like the talent is there, I don't know. Like, I don't know it, it, where it's at. But I guess to me also, though, catch, if we're just keeping it in a buck, like, this thing's about winning. And so at the end of the day, like, you, you, you got an opportunity to bring in a guy who can have an impact and you can win games. Like, man, people ain't going to care. People are going to say, like, oh, we love him. You know, sugar bear, honey bear, like they're going to give him all kinds of bear stuff as long as he's coming out and being productive. So I think we can act, you know, very religious and hold our Bibles and act like, oh, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, if he's productive enough, yeah, you kick the tires on a guy like that. I mean, he's he's not doing crimes. He's just a guy that ain't going to be on campus long. That's it. And so I think if you can live with that, but get some productivity out of him for the, his short time here and kind of somehow manage him. I, you know, you, you'll see. I don't know. Here's the last thing I'll say on that. I know Bo Davis probably could have managed a guy like that. I just don't know if Kenny Baker is a guy that can handle that. That's the only thing I don't know. And he's probably looking for like six, seven hundred thousand dollars well. in NIL money. And I wonder, you know, like at some level, if the right guy is available, maybe one of these guys from Michigan, um, maybe. You feel like you've got that? I wonder if that's where they would go. Let me ask you this, Alex. Bear started at Georgia as a true freshman. A couple of games. I don't think he's not like a season-long starter, but he goes to USC. In his career, 56 tackles, three and a half sacks. He's a good player. Like, let's just start at the, the Bear basics. Do you think, as a talent, he improves the 2024 Longhorns? Yes, and I think that the and I think there are members of the team that think so too. So on a scale of one to ten, let's let's start here. Tia Savea, on a scale of one to ten, how much do we think as a talent his presence through the transfer portal improved the team? Based on the early super early returns, I don't know, six and a half. Okay, so what would Bear Alexander be? More like an eight. Okay. So from a talent standpoint, he makes you better. He makes your defensive tackle position better. Unquestionably. Unquestionably. He would he would come in and push to start. So they, yeah. they have to kick the tire. A phone call has to be made, right? The, you, uh, no. Like the last word I got, and I haven't told you this catch, but like this morning – um, we, we'd heard about this. We are kicking it around even before the reports and stuff came out. Right. And, um, and it was like, since then, um, I've, you know, just putting it out there, I've heard that there's interest on the Texas side. I feel like that there's, you know, I, I feel like there's legs to this and I feel, you know, it's, I know in the past there's been the NIL stuff and there's different sourcing and all the rest. And I, I, I get it, but, um, I, I think he would be, a, I think he would be a, great ad and i feel like that there's probably you know there's there it feels to me like there's a lot of smoke as far as the momentum here on water you know, catch catch you, go I'm, ahead. Looking at, I'm looking at bears a uh x account right now and it has like bear alexander and then it's his his x slash twitter handle 
and and for he, he has himself down as listed himself as a professional athlete. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> that literally that's what he lists himself at on his on his ex account no look and okay, i'm not mad at the guy for wanting to get as much money out of every single season that he can yeah. a lot of us as we get older would just call that like trying to live the best life and like trying to maximize your opportunities we do view football players in college and athletes you know we it, i don't know we we judge them differently and harsher like I think a lot of people would look at what he's done and maxed, maximized and go into first Georgia and then USC. Whatever his value is, he's maximized it in the first two years. Uh, there's the price, I think, that it would take to get Barrick Alexander. There's also been some Colorado scuttlebutt. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could totally get that. If Colorado had the money to pay him. They got sapped. I mean, look, <laughs> right? Bear Alexander's not going anywhere without getting paid. Yeah. Professional athlete, Bear Alexander. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm curious to see where this goes. Like, I think that, like, the very first thing, does he make this team better? If we forget about, like, is he good for team morale? Does he mess anything up? Does he cause any division? If we forget about that and we just look at the talent. Alex is 100% right. They, You can even make the case they don't have anybody as talented. Like Alfred Collins is as talented as Bear Alexander, but is he as good? It's at least a conversation, and I don't think there's anybody else on the team right now. You know, I wouldn't say, oh, 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 oh. Onward. Vernon Broughton. He's at, oh, okay, let's not go that far. It feels like Bear would definitely upgrade the position Kind of feels like it's up to Sark's got to make a call here and say, I can handle it. And Kenny Baker, I've got this, or they just can't do it, right? Because bringing him in, everybody in the locker room, I think, would appreciate it, the fact that he's really talented. But a lot of guys would be making observations about what happened to make that happen. And like, why am I not getting. This Bear Alexander treatment, per se. So it's not as easy. It's a little more complicated than like, we'll just go get him then. Yeah, well, he, I mean, they're, he, they're, he didn't, they're, sorry. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, he, I, I think with the, he, he didn't like, I don't, I think he didn't like, what is it, Grinch? The US, I think Grinch was the USC, right? Is he the USC? Uh, is Alex Grinch the DC? The, I mean, he was, was, talking, about, I don't know he was talking about there. Grinch earlier. Um, he was. So I don't make sure. Now. Let's see. Let me make sure. Uh, safe. So USC fires Alex Grinch. So that was hey, with, Grinch is with Wisconsin. That, I think he. he did, I, I think he. You know. I, I think there was something where he just. You know. He never really felt it. He just never really felt it with Grinch. You know. And now he wouldn't have to deal with him coming back. But I think that that was maybe some kind of explanation for what might have happened last year, why he wasn't maybe as productive as you would have thought based on his re- recruiting pedigree and everything like that. But um. You know, pe- you know, people in the chat are talking Next about one transfer. Now we just got to explain the other seven. <laughs> I, 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 don't have a, I, I just, I, I feel like, I, I feel like there's, um, I feel like that there are players, there are players on there. People talk about whether it would be a cultural fit and everything like that. And I'm, I can, I can get it. Like Onwar says, he's transferred a bunch and done all this stuff. But, um, you know, I think part of the cultural fit would be like, what do the players think? Right. I think, I think, you know, it, it, dude, it's been kind of, and it's been through the staff and it's been through um, different, you know, different people that we've heard from and just the, the it's kind of been out there bubbling underneath the service that they're going to take, an, take another deep, deep defensive tackle that they knew that they needed to. Right. And if it's a dude who, you know, that there are guys on your team that, that, that like him and I mean, make no mistake, Jason will be the first to tell you this. These guys all go to the same camps. They get to know each other during these cycles. They're like, they, like these guys kind of become friends and, I just, I get I get the you know I get the feeling like maybe if from the outside you might not think he's a cultural fit well maybe they're guys on, like maybe he's kind of boys with some of these guys and stuff you know that's just like I don't have any specifics but that's kind of the vibe that I get so um I just I wouldn't I I just I wouldn't um with 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 Bear Alexander the way that I would look at it is say well with 
it hadn't been like he's going to these schools and he's been a complete nuisance and just a menace. You know what I mean? And just doing all this stuff. He just hasn't played, I think, at the level that his five star status. He hasn't been. He wasn't all Pac-12. He hasn't been a guy that's won. He's been a good. He's been a good player, and he's really talented. Mm -hmm. And and to and, and to me, whenever you start hearing what we heard this morning that you know he's he's very interested in getting back home, that's something where it's like maybe once you get back home and that homing instinct comes in and stuff like that, you finally feel like you're settled. You finally and it, maybe that's kind of like you know realizing that you know he's what he's gone off and, and sown his royal oats, right? Like like he's coming to America, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, um, so yeah, to to me, it feels like. Uh, to me, it feels like it would be an excellent fit, especially if the, you know there's interest on his side, interest on the Texas side. Um, he makes the team better. You know, the cultural stuff, I'll certainly leave that up to Stark because he's put in three hard years of building that culture. But I would think that, you know, if there is an interest on the Texas side, Sark wouldn't feel like he's a threat to that because we know that Sark, outside of just pure winning football games, the, th- the thing he cares most about is the, is, is the culture within that locker room. So, yeah, but you know, culture, culture also revolves around winning though. I mean, like that at the end of the day, like, I mean, it's the culture, the culture aspect is not, this is not like, you know, Texas Christian or something like that, where you're like, that are you, does he fit into the Bible studies on a Tuesday night? Like, you know, at the end of the day, if you're athletic and you can play and you can ball, I, you, you'll fit into whatever this culture thing is that you're trying to accomplish because at the end of the day, the common goal is winning. Like, hey, do you want to come here? Do you want to win? And to your point, Alice, which I do agree with you, um, outside of me just having fun and clowning how many times a man is transferred, no one's saying he's a bad guy. Like, no one's saying that he's an a-hole or, you know, he's been disruptive. This is not a guy who's been getting kicked off of teams. He's just leaving teams. This is not, you know, it, it's – we can talk ceremoniously about cultural fit, right? Let's not forget two years ago, this is the same program that took a Jai Hall and catch you and I know what the red flags were as relates to a Jai when he was at Alabama. But you know what they said? He can play. He can ball. You know what he did in that spring game? You know what? We might be able to make him fit in here. Now, at the end of the day, Jai Hall weeded himself out, but we can't act like Texas won't take somebody that you know maybe has a couple of little character dings here and there if they feel like he can play if a guy a bear can play then you know what you'll figure out the culture thing but you know what you know what no one cares about yeah at the end of the day no one's showing up on saturday to watch culture okay everybody's showing up on saturday to watch this team win and if you can go out there and, and attack the quarterback and be disruptive that's what people are paying to see because they ain't paying to see nobody's damn culture. It's funny. I can remember even going back to the Mac Brown era, Mac would talk about family and culture. And I remember they took a kid in recruiting one year who hit his mom. Like that was a thing that happened. Mm. Hit his mom, like hit her. And they took that dude (laughs) because they thought he was, and I know Jason knows who I'm talking about. I've referenced this before. I've never, I will never reveal who the guy was uh but like it happened and there were suspensions and stuff and sometimes you just take guys because you think they're really really good and you feel like you can work it out i think you look at this kid the same way you'd probably look at a jai hall who i think had more baggage i don't think so yeah a jai hall stunk dude (laughs) but he was thought of as a really talented guy. I mean, Sark took him in funny, despite yeah. the baggage. Yeah, but Ajay had out. like Ajay, so many drops, and like I got, I got, I got killed for saying, "Man, this guy stinks." You know, and people are like, "How can you say that?" Like, but like, well, it's just like I said it about Jaleel Billingsley and you know, and all the you know Ben Davis and all the rest of these Alabama retreads. They're not any good. I mean, Bears good, <laughs> but Ajay yeah. had character type issues. I don't know that I've ever heard of Bear having. And I didn't get to know Bear well as a recruit, but I talked to him a couple of times and he seemed like a good kid. I don't think he's always had the best guidance. He's had people pulling him in different directions, moving around five different high schools, as Anwar said. But I don't think it's ever been like a true character issue with him in terms of breaking laws and getting in trouble and locker room troubles. And Alex brought up a good point going to these camps. I'm trying to remember when I interviewed him at that camp, I think it was an Under Armour camp. Kelvin Banks was there. I think maybe NATO was there. DJ Campbell. So, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe he does know some of these dudes that are kind of pulling him towards Texas. But 
Um, yeah, I don't. They did yeah. reach out to him last year, though. Like when he entered the portal coming out of Georgia, that he Texas did not like make efforts with him. And I'm not saying there aren't red flags, but I think it's different red flags than maybe what a, Jai, a guy like a Jai Hall. Also, a, also a different depth chart today. I mean, there's a there's a glaring issue right now. There's <laughs> no Byron Murphy. They yeah. felt like, well, we got Byron Murphy and Devondre Sweat. Like this guy won't even start for us. Uh, you're right. It is different. You know, again, I think you got to make the call. And if he wants too much money, then he wants too much money. If you don't feel like from an NIL perspective, because they got budgets, they're trying to keep their house in order, you know, and maybe if they feel like they that disrupts that, then, but I feel like there's money in the NIL. They'll, they will find money for the right defensive tackle. The question is, is he the defensive tackle or are you saving that because you know for sure that either Graham or Grant are coming out from Michigan? And I've, I've made this mention all. Is, is is Grant number 78 for Michigan? Oh, man, I can't. Re- if it's number 78, now that's it. Now that's it. Uh, no, that would be a tough one for, oh, gosh, because that guy's good. Like, all, Texas, all look, there are a lot of Texas fans. We. <laughs> We, we've had a Texas player's parent come into the chat and say, oh, like, that's done. They're getting that one of those guys from Michigan. I mean, that's happened. Kenneth, Kenneth Grant, number 78. There's yeah, a lot cool. of speculation. And, and I, I don't think about this on our show earlier today. You know, the thing about these transfer portals is all of these guys have reps and agents and runners and friends And like they're talking to schools and they're telling them, oh, yeah, don't you worry. He's going to he's going to enter the portal. He's going to enter the portal. You just sit tight. We got this all worked out. And then sometimes they don't enter the portal. Texas thought Isaiah Bond was going to enter the portal. And he did. But the portal window closed. He went to classes at Alabama and then Nick Saban retired. And then he entered the portal. But. Texas had been thinking that Isaiah Bond might enter the portal, and then he didn't. They thought the same thing about Barry and Brown, and I think even the second time around, they were like, sure, we'll believe it when we see it. Then he didn't enter the portal, and they were like, yep, we kind of suspected that Barry and Brown, that might happen. I will, you know, they they may think that the Michigan, a Michigan guy or two will enter the portal, but sometimes – Sometimes these kids do things that their agents wouldn't suggest that they would do. And so I think you got to kind of wait. We know Bear Alexander is going to the portal. Yes. Is, and so is he a bird in hand or, and the other two guys are in the bush. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's what like, because even let's, let, let's say Texas were able to land bear. And I mean, I know NIL is a thing and I know, you know, whatever we, we live in a world where there's a, Definitely some kind of salary cap to this NIL. I don't know what these – you catch, you would know better than I would what the exact kind of cap number is for that. But those aren't our decisions to make, and it's not coming out of fans' pockets, and it's, you know, it's not for – you know, it shouldn't matter to fans how much these guys are getting paid, right, Like just as long as they get on the team. I don't think if you got Bear that that would at all – um, what, like – uh, that that would make it to where you wouldn't like if you had an opportunity for one of those Michigan dudes if they came out you'd want to go after them too. That's two guys who could put two guys who could push to start over the two that you currently have. And I hate to say it about Alfred Collins and Vernon Broaden because they're the best Texas has right now, right? But I mean Vernon Broaden's going to have to play better than he played last year. And Alfred Collins, you know, while he's flashed, he hasn't been a consistent player for Texas. He can at least hold up decently against the run, better than Broughton. But both those guys come with, you know, a couple little issues. We all knew the defensive line was not going to be a strength here. Man, oh God, a guy like Bear Alexander, he helps you like helps you right then. It's just as far as fortifying this thing. And and look, this is coming from me who's like, I, I told you guys, man, Troy Carter is not going to be any good, right? TSFA is not going to be that much better than him. Like he, he'll, he'll be a little bit better. Um. Just with with Bear, it's uh, I think that I, I think if this is something where there's momentum, I think they strike while the iron's hot. If you get one of those Michigan dudes, then you're just dude, then you're just piling it on, and all of a sudden you look at the defense now and you're like, well, oh, where find the find the hole? You know, they're willing, the, they willing to stack the wide receiver room, right? 
So, I mean, if you're willing to stack the wide receiver room because you said you needed some experience there, but why not stack the D, uh, the defensive line room catch? And to your point, you know, you catch, remember, I think it was, was it last year or so where there was that anticipation that all these receivers were going to go into the portal? And I think like a guy from Kentucky and South Carolina, remember all that? And at the end of the day, a lot of those guys ended up staying. So, Sometimes if you know that, hey, I got you know, that bird in the hand that's here, you can't always just throw that person back and say, I will wait for those Michigan guys because you don't know what's going to happen, especially in this well, world of NIL. And that's what, almost what happened to them at the wide receiver position in the portal. They didn't want Deuce Wells, really. They didn't want the Deion other guy. Burks. Yeah, Deion Burks. Thank you. I always forget his name. You know, they were like, no, we're going to wait. And they almost got caught with their pants down a little yeah. bit because – they pulled well, a rabbit out of the hat. And they talk, didn't yeah. enter the portal. Yeah. And only it, it took Saban retiring real quick. Cause it's been a while since I've been able to play this. Just this conversation alone. I, I gotta I just guys, just deal with me here for a little bit. Fight. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back. We're back. Some, Portal Combat back. Yeah, we're back, baby. Some, we're back. Somewhere your former producer Blake is smiling as he uh, sees that. Blake, I'm so we still have it. Blake! And we're ready to play it on a on, on a whim. Um I want to change the subject quickly. Just to Sark's press conference today on War. Hey, Texas hey, hey, hey catch, catch before we do that, there were a couple of super chats about Bear. Do you want to get oh, to those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Let right. me uh, let me go back to those. You're exactly right. I saw them and then forgot about them. Um, here we go here from Aloha Traveler. Aloha, fellas, from Kauai. If Aloha. you're Texas and you feel like you're close to absolutely have to go all in at defensive tackle in the portal, in my opinion, we see Ohio State, Ole Miss, and Oregon go for it. So should Texas for $10. Thank you, Aloha Traveler. I agree, but is the question – is Bear Alexander the guy you go, you absolutely go all in for? I don't. That's the question. Again, you run the risk if you don't that you'd end up not getting anybody when it's all said and done. Tom G, uh, it's all said and done. Tom G for ten dollars. Thank you, Tom. Always appreciate it. What's up, fellas and OB fam? Looking forward to seeing you all in a few weeks. The Bear is a cancer, in my opinion. I hope Texas stays away. That's harsh. Um, Jeez. I mean, it's harsh, Tom. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, look, I again, I know people connected to the Texas program who feel the same way. I, I mean, I've had this conversation before. I will say, let me just oh, hold on. Oh, oh, breaking, breaking. OK, this is breaking news on the. Um. Oh, God. Bear Alexander front. I asked somebody who I consider super rock solid. And he and I have had Bear Alexander conversations in the past. And I texted him earlier today, no way on Bear Alexander, right? Or never say never. And he responded back, yes way. <laughs> I oh, told wow. you, man. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. well, there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yes yeah. way. Yep. So I've been waiting for that text. Like yeah, I was man. like, you know what? If it happens during the show, I'll give an update. It happened during the show, fellas. There's there's maybe a little bit of a fire with the smoke. I'm letting yeah, you man. know a person who I think would know uh, didn't kill it when I send it his way, and he very easily could have been like, no way, and that had been that as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, no, we need to keep our eye on Bear Alexander moving forward. Um, man, by the way, we have more Super Chats that have filed in. So let me knock these out as well. More on Tom G. Uh, he says, for $5, thank you, Tom G. Clarify my comments. Last year we heard he was a me first and not a locker room guy. We have a culture. We need to keep it. Man, Tom, I'm just going to refer you back to what Anwar said earlier with the Jai Hall. They knew 
They're all former Alabama staffers. They knew what happened with Ajay Hall at Alabama and Anwar. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's fair to say they thought, oh, well, we, we can handle this. We can do it. Yes. We know. We got this. And then they didn't. But it will never stop them from thinking that they've got this if they can convince themselves uh, that a guy, uh, Oscar, for four ninety nine. dollars I'm with you on this. Why is everybody so down on the bear? I think it's an amazing show. Best show on TV, Oscar. Jason, you've seen the bear, right? That's one of the few shows I have watched. In hey, fact, man, uh, your yes, I've, even, I've, 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 I've even seen the bear, man. I can't, me and Jason, the two old fuddy duddies, man. Like, True we, story, we, catch. I started watching it after you put it number one on your list in 10 thoughts. I was like, all right, I got to give this, give this a go. So yeah. Yep. It makes me, yeah. that makes me, feel like that's why I do the lists. Because there's one, one person out there. That, I didn't watch the other nine. I didn't watch the other nine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, okay, so guys, I'm, you're watching the show right now. We've got almost 700 watching the show via you know, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Um, the Bear Alexander thing is real. You know, it's like ring the alarms and – Everybody can like it's like a fire drill. Everybody get ready. Put your put your hat on. Uh, we will be yeah, following man. on Bear Alexander um, today. The press conference that Texas had a practice on where I thought Sark had a few interesting comments. Sometimes it's not what he says, it's what he doesn't say, and then sometimes it's like what he did say. What or who did he leave out? The Ryan Wingo thing is really interesting. He's asked by you who like talk about the portal guys. And he's like, Oh, they're all right. They're working through it. It's going to be okay. You know, Isaiah Bond had a good practice today. Matthew Golden's coming on. We had to hold him back. And then he's like, just so you know, the one receiver that I think really stands out is Ryan Wingo. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Second time. Second time. Second time in two weeks. He's talked about how how good Ryan Wingo is. Un, unsolicited too, and kind of changing the subject to talk about him. Yeah, I because I my question uh catch I was it was hey, tell me about the portal guys and tell me about some like your incumbent receivers, right? So I, I honestly I thought it was gonna lead to John T. Cook. That's why yeah. I, thought, I thought, you know, incumbent guys, you know, yeah, John T. Cook, DeAndre Moore, so on and so forth. And he's like, Oh, I just want to let you know, Ryan Wingo is a badass. I, I don't know if you heard me last week, but I just want to say it again. Ryan Wingo is a badass. And he, he's he what he said is like from a true true freshman perspective, when he's out there, it doesn't feel like a true freshman. He plays fast makes plays on the ball. He's not right all the time because then I don't expect him to be right all the time, but he's making some full speed mistakes and it looks comfortable right now as a guy who, who should be in high school. He's out there playing with all our guys. I mean, I think Ryan Wingo is, you know, I, sorry, sorry, don't really hype up a guy unless he feels like that guy is worthy of it. So if Sark is talking about Ryan Wingo, from a positive note at this moment, that must mean like Ryan Wingo is balling even harder than we can imagine, right? If he's if he's giving him some credit, then that means, and he's like, I'm going to give this freshman credit for two weeks in a row. I mean, I've, yeah, I've heard things behind the scenes, how much Sark loves this guy. It's clear that the, what, where we, from reporting, whether it's Alex, yourself, some of my, my resources, and then, of course, what Sark is saying that coincides with it. There's a guy who's making a push right now. It's it's the it's the Ryan Ringo. That's that's the guy you just got to buy some stock in right now. Hold on. Didn't I get shouted down for this same topic last week? By who? Uh, Wingo? By you, on We were week? talking about Jonte versus Wingo, and I said 90% Wingo performing. You're like, nope. You're like, you're wrong. I do so many shows. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I got. What day was that? Was that a Tuesday? I don't, I don't even remember. That was a week ago today. I don't even. Jason, 
T- here are your flowers. Yes. <laughs> yes, good Jason. Boy. Good job, Jason. Good job. Yes. It, it, it either should have made a bet on that, damn it. It, it. Yeah, either one of you guys ever pay up on the damn Casey Thompson bet. <laughs> All right, so, it, it, so I don't want to hear. Not either one of us, Anwar. One of us. Not yeah, either Alex, one of us. Alex is cheap ass. Go ahead. But you're right. You were right, Jason. You're going to Alex, the, you got to pay that you lunch. To, so you, you can go into the history of that bet. That's it. That's it. Well, that was a cock. It's a, it was a it was a cock and Amy bet to begin with, and completely unfair. Yeah. Dustin still wants that to be paid. Um, if I'm a receiver on war, every other receiver on the team, I'm like, I got to get my shit together because <laughs> yeah. he's calling out the freshman and he ain't calling out my name. And if I'm Jonte, if I'm Isaiah Bond, if I'm Matthew Golden, like I'm noticing, like he's. He's telling us through the media that that's his guy. And everybody needs to be, I, you know, all those guys are, this is a game of musical chairs. They can't all start. And, you know, I don't know that Ryan Wingo's a starter yet, but boy, he's on his way. If he's even, right? It, if, it's, if a freshman's even, we always say, if he's even, he's leaving. I don't know who's ahead of Ryan Wingo, and Sark apparently doesn't know either. Yeah, well, the thing is, so it was interesting catch when I um when I sat down with Chris Jackson before the Sugar Bowl and I interviewed him and I asked him about the incoming freshman receivers. Uh, and this was back in early January or late December, might be late, very late December, might be December 30th or 31st. Um, anyway. He told me that out of all the incoming freshman receivers, he told me all those guys had something to work on. But he said Ryan Wingo will be the most ready to play out of all those guys. Like they, he was just, and he get, he explained why Ryan Wingo was. He talked about how when you turn on the tape of him, and he said, you know, he he just got this dog mentality about him, and he and he went into gave me this whole story about what Ryan Wingo says is that um, when he gets on the field. He just starts thinking about his family, and their their living conditions, some of their circumstances, and he just transforms into a totally different player. And so he told me basically coming in that Ryan Wingo would be the 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 the, 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 the receiver that would separate himself from all those people. So now I already expected him to be on the next plateau with the other guys who are incumbent, and now he just is he's a guy that's really has hit the ground running, and you know. When a coach is saying stuff like, yeah, he makes some mistakes, but he makes it at full speed. I mean, they're they're seeing something special in him that says like, yeah, maybe he doesn't know what exactly what he's doing, but if we could just get him to do these one or two things, my God. Like, yeah, he may have gotten open on this route, but it was actually not the thing he was supposed to do. But we just teach him one or two things. Yeah. And by the way, Catch, as you know from the dating world, Sometimes that new boo, that new person that you meet, that new everything, when everything's fresh and new, it is so much a lot. It's so much better. And Ryan Wingo is that new boo right now, and everybody else is going to have to catch up. I've forgotten what that feels like, Anwar. (laughs) 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 Hadn't been too many new boos with a few of us lately. Yeah, I I had to clean it up, by the way. I had to clean it up (laughs) for what what I could have said. You know what's funny is – Omar, in, in like talking to people around Ryan Wingo, like when his name kind of bubbled up the last couple of weeks, they're like, hey, man, people in the St. Louis area, are like, he's never really had true wide, with all due respect to his high school staff, true wide receiver skilled coaching where they've really been hands on with him. So they're, he's just a raw piece of clay. So if he's doing that well through three weeks of camp, I mean, they feel like the sky's the limit for him. So that's a, uh, it's pretty interesting to, and you know, to hear Wingo's name get brought up again, uh, you report Trey Wisner got brought up again. I mean, it seems like every time we check on something, Trey Wisner's name gets brought up. So Jaden blue, no CJ Baxter. Yeah. I was about to say, is Wingo this year, CJ Baxter? Is he Sark's dude? Is that just, is that what it is this year? That, uh... All of those wide receivers need to be listening because he's Sark's telling them and if they don't listen, they might find themselves not getting as many game reps as they think they thought they were going to get a month ago. Uh, one last thing, and then I got to go because I got to take my kid uh, to Mathnasium by five o'clock. Um, <laughs> I know what that is. The Jalen Gilbo note today I thought was interesting. He said yeah. he's back, and 
you know, what does that mean? Well, once upon a time when he first showed up as a true freshman, and, and Alex can attest to this because he charted all the games, he was the starter two years ago as a true freshman at the star position, got hurt. Baron kind of retakes over that role full time. But if, if he's back, I got just a bunch of questions about that. Is he one of the top five DBs? Is he back to starting level and that they could move Baron potentially around? What does that mean for Austin Jordan? Because I think there was a feeling that there's only so many snaps and like a big role for so many stars in any one year. And Austin Jordan's going to be a junior this year. So there's a lot that I read into that and started asking questions. But, um, you know, Gilbo being singled out along with, um, you know, Jelani McDonald and Malik Muhammad um, as guys in the defensive backfield that he, he made a point to single out today, I thought was interesting. Well, it's in keeping with, um, you know, him saying Jelani McDonald playing more at safety, right? So it kind of takes Jelani McDonald out of that whole nickel discussion. He's been working with the, with the second group at safety and some of the times that we've been able to observe, who knows, they're mixing it up in team. I'm sure, I'm sure they're doing some other stuff, but we know he's been getting some work with the um, with the second group at safety. So that leaves it the nickel, Baron, Gilbo, and who catch said right when he first came in, he looked like he was going to be like a revelation, just very, very productive and efficient player, just getting his hands on footballs, uh, good, you know, good in run support. Um, just came, you know, came in looking like a w- really well rounded guy, and just to hear somebody say that he's back, uh, you know that. Austin Jordan, I can't say this for sure, man, but and maybe Amor was, see, but I feel like he's 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 number he's number four, number four, right? I think. Um, uh, I got my always got my yeah. roster right here I, by me. Is he four? Yeah, number four, correct. Yeah, so I man, I think I've seen him playing a little bit of outside corner too. So um, to, to me, this feels like I look one thing. One thing that's true is that other schools. Are, are going to be coming after Gilbo and hoping that he enters the tr- the, tr- the transfer portal. And um, m- maybe Sark had heard about a, a specific school that's doing that or one specific personnel guy that's doing that. I personally know about one. Um, but, uh, you know, he could be kind of giving his love and stuff like that, knowing that, man, saying, like, Gilbo's a good player and we need to keep him around for one more year before Jade gets out of here, right? I, I, or do you think that this is something where you think Gilbo could push Jade Barron, who, you know, some people are saying – could be one of the best returning nickel men in college football. I'd be interested well, to hear what y'all think. It's like, how good do you think Terrence Brooks is? Because we know that they tried to replace him with Malik Muhammad's cousin. So, yeah. you know, does – do is – I'll go back to this. They're trying to – and Sark said they're trying to get their best five on the field, right, Anwar? Yes, correct, correct, correct. So, when you say he's back, is he back to being in the top five – and then does that mean you've got to move some guys around to facilitate getting him, if he's one of your best five, getting him on the field? Now, Sark mentioned that he and McDonald and Barron were guys that could play multiple positions. Specifically, he said those three guys, if I am remembering Anwar's notes yeah. correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so, correct. you know, we know that Barron would like to potentially play outside – to diversify his skill set a little bit, I, just something to keep an eye on. Like, there's you can't read too much into it yet, but I heard Gilbo as a standout on Saturday, so it doesn't surprise me that he would mention him today as a guy that stood out in the scrimmage. But man, he's back is a two word sentence that has a lot of implications in it. We'll see where it goes from here. Um, Sark entertained me today, Anwar, with with some commentary that had me asking questions. Um, Anything else, guys, before we wrap up? Because, like I said, I got to get out the door. Nah. No? Let's uh, remind everybody real quick, we do have a very special partner here over at OrangeBloods.com and Orange Bloods Live, and it's the guys over at Specs. What you're needing, Specs Same Day Delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world-class wines to -to hard-to-find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets. It's Specs. Cheers to savings. 
We'll wrap, guys. We'll wrap up by saying there's almost 800 watching on YouTube, Twitter, eight, eight, 800 likes, of course, right, Catch? 800 Hit likes. Hit that like Twitter. button. <laughs> uh, but I was going to say for the four of us, that's probably an indication of like people see saw Bear Alexander, they saw Portal and the question mark, and they're filing in to listen to the conversation. If you missed it uh, and don't want to go searching back through 15, 20 minutes ago. Uh, we did talk a lot about Bear Alexander. I did literally on the air uh, confirm that a source said there's not just smoke with Bear Alexander and the Longhorns. There might there is a little bit of fire. I don't know how to completely phrase it. He didn't say too much, uh, but he sure didn't shoot it down. Uh, so hey, we'll be on it. Yeah. Before you get up, before you get off, real quick, someone sent me the affidavit. I got the affidavit for Tavandre Sweat. Um, just real quick, this. It, you talk about the craziest of luck. It looks like somebody actually hit Tavandre from the back and it made his car uh, kind of flip up. And when the police, so he got hit. And then when the police got there, they ended up saying, he, he, they asked him some questions. And then he's like, yeah, well, I had a couple of drinks beforehand. And that's how he ends up getting arrested. <sighs> No so, comment. I'm just all right. I just want to throw that out there. I'll, I'll put out the affidavit and leave it there. But it, you talk about some crazy bad bad luck. That's what that ends up. Hey, doing. we're all rooting for Devondre Sweat to go uh, as high as possible. We certainly don't want him off of certain teams' draft boards. The way Lance Zerline suggested that maybe the Texans might just take him off the draft board and not even consider him. So uh, any good news for Devondre is good news for most of us. Uh, we want to see him uh, have success. Uh, for myself, for Jason, for Alex, and Anwar. Guys, hit that thumbs up button. We see there's a bunch of you watching the video. Help a brother out. Like, click on the video. It helps us out. We can't explain the algorithms, but the thumbs up help. Uh, we'll see you again on Thursday for the next edition of the Modcast. Anwar won't be in it, but we'll all be back. But Anwar will be back tomorrow morning for the Old Fashioned. We'll have House Divided. We'll have the recruiting hour. Big stuff planned tomorrow. We'll probably talk about Bear Alexander because... Why wouldn't we? Uh, so stay tuned. We'll have more on Orange Bloods Live in the coming days. As always, we'll see you soon. Later.